All right, welcome back. I'm Rich Folley. This is the Los Angeles Times Festival of Books, day one. And I'm sitting here right now with two authors that I mentioned before. I sort of discovered at the same time, and I said how what an exciting time it was to be here with both of you. I have Mark Lehner, whose new novel, or fictional type of autobiography, is called Gone with the Mind, and T.C. Boyle, whose book, The Harder They Come, this is a... Uh, it's been out for about a year now. You have another one coming, The Terranauts, which I'm sure we'll talk about as well. But welcome to both of you, first Thanks of all. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks, Rich. When I mentioned that um, I didn't expect in 1992 or three when I was reading you both and so excited to have discovered you both, that I'd be sitting here on the couch with you. Mark, you jumped in and said that we'd still be alive, question mark. <laughs> but yes. you are, and thriving, both I don't know, I guess that, that indicates some sort of perilous <laughs> life we've led. But, yeah. uh, a friend of mine once know. was in the audience for a Burroughs reading, and guy raised his hand and said, Mr. Burroughs, do you believe in the afterlife? And Burroughs fixed him with that eyeball and said, what makes you think you're alive? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So we want to stay away from that. That's right. Well, we will. <laughs> but you guys have been around for a while, and there's been some incredible career arcs to your work. But what I, what I think first attracted me to both of you is a sort of iconoclastic nature of what you do. You sort of push against the conventions of fiction, mark your work. I mean, both of you are satirists of the highest degree. Uh, TC, your stuff is sort of long form. In a novel, you're, you're sort of skewering various things that are on your mind at the time. And Mark, for you, your satire exists within the sentences, literally. I always feel like when I'm reading your books that we're on our way to Disneyland, but we're stopping at the largest ball of twine, and then we're stopping at the next largest yeah. ball of twine. And <laughs> we never get to Disneyland, but man, those balls of twine the ride. are awesome. The you know, ride. those little sentences. Yeah, both yeah. of you guys are masterful, though on the satire side, and I wanted to start there. Um, when you first started writing, how did it begin for you? Was it something where you thought, like, this is how I'm, I'm, I'm angry at these things, or I have, I have concerns about these things, I'm gonna sort of play with them, to sort of turn some of these conventions on their head, and sort of push against those styles? I think um, anger is a, uh, a part of it. You know, I don't, it's a kind of non-specific anger. I'm just a disaffected, messed up guy, you know. But uh, I think that for me, the act of writing has always, it has felt somewhat confrontational. Again, I'm not certain with what, you know, but it's always felt uh, to me a, a, as a kind of liberational, insurrectionary thing, a sort of call to the barbarians to sack Rome or, so, or something in <laughs> yeah. that way. And I've been, you know, I think more interested in that in a kind of formal sense. And as you said, in the sort of the form of the sentences and the movement from sentence to sentence and juxtapositions rather than any specific satirical target. Right. And TC, your stuff, when you, your, your targets sort of move from book to book. Yeah, it um, begins for me, Rich, with, with being a kid growing up in suburban New York with a group of very smart, disaffected, wise guys who remain my friends to this day. So you had to be sharp to stay one beat ahead of them. And of course, we wanted to tear everything down because who built this world? We had no idea. But our job was to destroy it. Um, it wasn't until I was like 30 that I realized, wait a minute, I built it and I have to keep <laughs> it from falling down. Yeah. So that's where it began for me. Well, you built it, but it changed. I mean, I, I remember distinctly, and uh, there's a sort of a time in your writing where you went from laugh riotous out loud, just absurdist stuff, um, to really taking on some larger issues. I oh, mean, whether it was immigration or, or sort of nature and the environment, um, gun control, et cetera. I think anything can be a story in any mode, and I challenge myself to do that. The hardest one was a couple of years ago, I did San Miguel. It's an historical novel written from the point of view of three women without irony. Could I do it without irony? It was the hardest thing I ever did, but I'm glad I did it, you know, because you gotta push yourself, otherwise you write the same thing over and over yeah. again. Did you get pushed on not being ironic for a novel? I mean, were your fans like, where, where is it? I've lost it. Nah, my mother liked it, so that was enough for me. <laughs> your mother has to like your, your new book. Your mother is it. one of the stars yeah. of, of, yeah. of your book. I think book. it terrified her a bit. Really? <laughs> yeah, I th you know, she, the, collaborated very much in the her her introduction of the book which it, it, the the premise is she's a 45 page uh, yeah, intro and she's supposed to be doing something that should last a minute she's introducing me <laughs> at a reading at a yeah. food court at a mall um, it's a food court reading series in New Jersey. I, I tricked her, and I didn't actually tell her what we were going to use it for. So I said, just talk about when you were pregnant with me in the mid mid 50s. And uh, 
She did it, and it was great. I mean, we had like 20 hours of material. She's a, t you know, logoriac, as they say, <laughs> quite a talker. Anyway, she was terrified to actually read what she had said. I mean, I think she was very worried that she had inadvertently um, insulted people in the family. Well, the, the two people, the Panda Express and the Sabara worker, who didn't really attend your reading but yeah. were there by virtue of taking a break, um, got a really great sort of life story of you. There's a, it is truly autobiographical, but what I, one of the things I really loved is the Q&A at the end of the book with you and your mother, which is touching. I mean, it, truly, it took me sort of off guard when it came. I mean, it was really sort of lovely. When well, you were thinking about that... Well, it's related to what TC was saying about irony and lack of irony. I think in this book, I sort of ended my embargo on emotional, emotionally autobiographical material yeah. and, and indulged in it. And it, it felt great. I mean, it's, I, I think I had avoided it because maybe I thought I was a, a boring, ordinary person and nothing about my life would be as interesting as what I could sort of cook up from all the detritus out there. But it's just as horrible inside me as it is outside of me, yeah. I discovered. Well, <laughs> well it, was, it was great to have that sort of uh, comic ride that your books always are for me. And, and I want to talk a little bit about the sort of arc of your careers. You've both been around for some time now. Your fans, I mean, for a lot of people, it was probably an introduction. They may have lost touch with you because you've been in Hollywood doing some things. Um, you've been writing a lot of magazine articles. And TC, for both of you guys, your careers have sort of changed and, and, and kept evolving all along. I mean, how conscious of it are you thinking of that as you go, or is this just sort of a natural innate... I'm totally conscious of it, Rich, really? as I said a minute ago. I want to push myself and do new things. So I'm always looking for what I haven't done. But, you know, you look back, you don't start off with set themes. You look back and you can see how... I can see how all the books are allied and that I'm kind of fascinated with being a green writer, even before green writers existed. I'm, I'm just amazed about us as an animal species on the earth and what it means. So I've written about global warming, I've written about the extinction of species, and it just keeps recirculating. It just, the ideas just keep coming in different form, always in different form. Yeah, so when you, for Mark, for you too, you've been, you had to go through an illness recently. I mean, how does that sort of affect your decision maybe to step back into this style of writing that, that so many people knew at Two Babe and some of the other books that they all got to know you well, with? It's interesting. The, the illness, I mean, plays well into some personal, personal um, mythology, I guess, I, I have. I, I, I had a very, I don't know if I would say lucky, but interesting time as a writer when I first became known and was on television. And, you know, it was a, a very different time when a, a writer could be on Letterman or Conan or shows like that. And I, I, it was particularly, I think, seductive publicity department at my book company then who, who got these things and then you know that ends you know that that kind of um, um, conspicuousness and uh, so and I went and did other things as you said some movie stuff I did a few books with a friend of mine who's a doctor uh, and whatnot so I feel and then I, I was hit by a car in Culver City here, I mean in California, which I took to be a sign. I'm always, re I read the world as a kind of cryptogram, you know, everything is a sign for me to decipher. So I, I, I took that to mean I should go back to New York and write books again. And, and I have, and I, so I've written two books as a kind of revenant. I'm, I've returned. Yes, you're quoted in that sack. Some, your titles yeah, are yeah. some of the finest parts about your book. Um, they definitely well, stand out. I'm a great <laughs> Wallace Stevens fan, and he's, he, Insp uh, inspired me to be a strong title man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they definitely are. I mean, you know, Tether Balls of the Bougainville, uh, you've got, uh, you know, Et Tu Babe and many others. I mean, they're really uh, highly Thanks. memorable. I didn't even know what a gastroenterologist was, yeah. uh, Mark. You introduced I've, me to that I've concept. I've done a great service, I think. <laughs> yeah, my cousin, my to people, with, to people with stomachs and bowels. Now really? they know what to... Your no, I have been a little luckier. <laughs> I didn't have the major disease, although I am awaiting a brain transplant. I should announce that. Um, I, I, I've described what I do as an obsessive compulsive disorder. I just can't stop. I, I wrote an essay about it. This monkey, my back. It's a kind of addiction. When you, are, you don't know what it's going to be, you're just trying to make something out of nothing. 
and it's hard and it begins to come together and suggest itself to you. And when it ends properly, beautifully, the exhilaration is staggering and you want to do it again. Like any junkie, you have to do it again. So I've been pretty steadily just writing a book every year and a half my whole life and that's all I really want to do yeah. because I haven't got to the end of it yet. I'm just still exploring. I'm trying to figure it all out. Sometimes there are historical figures for you. Sometimes you're making up characters. Sometimes they're based in newspaper stories or the news of the day. <clears throat> Where did the Terranauts come from? Your new one. I'd love to know like, the genesis of, I've got it. This is what I'm doing next. What a next. great leading question, Rich. <laughs> wow. I'm, so this is my I'm book that's coming out in the fall. <laughs> Uh, just before the election, my editor talked me into this. I was telling Mark earlier, um, you'll read about it in the newspaper. Either it's a big success or you'll read about a murder-suicide in lower Manhattan. Yeah. But it's, it, 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 they feel it's a quiet time before the election. Let's throw it out there. We'll see. Anyway, this is a story, uh, a fictional telling of the biosphere experiment of the early 90s in which uh, an artificial uh, ecosphere was created in the Arizona desert 3,800 species of plants and animals enclosed. Eight people, four men, four women, enclosed in here, sealed in for two years to see can they survive, uh, you know, recycling oxygen, making their own food, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the real story, it all broke down partway into the second closure because the billionaire who financed it got in a fight with the guy who created it, and that was the end of that. But in my telling, there were supposed to be 50 two-year closures. I just am positing a second one. I can take all the great material from the real world and make it go on. What I didn't realize was how incredibly sexy it became. Four men, four women. What are they going to do in there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think people will be excited to see it. Mark, when I was reading your book, and we're going to close, we gotta, we got to wrap up, but when I was reading your book, there's a sense of finality, like maybe there's not going to be another book to this. I read it like, are you done? Uh, I, got, I also got the sense, though, as I was reading it, that you sort of, it felt just sort of joyous to be back in your, in your groove. There's going to be more, though, right? I mean, we're going to see more Mark later coming up. I think. I, if, if I were to have a, a final book, this would be it. Yeah, I'm hoping but I don't. That. I don't think so. I mean, I, I w would echo what TC said. People ask, uh, "Am I excited about the reception of this book or reviews?" And it's nice to get nice reviews, but nothing compares to the feeling when you're engaged, when you're, you're sort of your hands are in the engine of this thing, and and it's coming to you. And uh, there's no feeling of of elation and euphoria like that. Nothing, nothing I've experienced. Well, that's excellent. More of those, please. I and agree exactly thanks. with what Mark's saying. When I was a student in the IR Writers Workshop, all the old writers would come to town and they would tell us essentially this, that the real thing is the making of it. And I thought probably, uh, privately, I thought, well, what crap? The real thing is <laughs> killing your enemies and getting glory. But I realize that, yeah, it's, it's occupying your day making something, which is what it's all about. Yep. Well, thank you both. Uh, as I mentioned, Literary Heroes of Mine, great to have you both thank on the couch so at the same much. time. Too I can rich. check that one off my bucket list. <laughs> great to have you both great here. Great to meet you and thanks great so to much. Be here. Yeah, wonderful.